land barren by houses, all in Safari town. Peter was in the other area called the Berlins, and I was on the other guy called the Vultures. <laughs> We had the same shirt on one day. Jose, this man. But not the more I am for me. I tell you, I'm a mini cup, brother. And then we had this small fight. I put him down. Put him down because I had the boss. But then I saw a life looming up in front of me. I saw a heart feeling for other people, <coughs> for those at the bottom, for those at the top, and so on. And then, through the camera, we saw life, we saw death, we saw pain. <coughs> I used to go to the schools, speak to them about black consciousness, Africanism, and so on. <coughs> using poetry, instigating them to take to the street. And then when they took to the street, their precious blood showered this country with the precious liquid of their lives. June 16th. He was there, I was there. <laughs> the two icons I looked up to were and respected were Peter Magabani and David Goldblatt. Forty years later, <clears throat> in a moment of synchronicity, we are here to celebrate the remarkable bodies of work of these two extraordinary fellows. Peter was never far from the front line throughout his life. <coughs> the cam camera for him was a weapon in which he wanted to kill the apartheid, liberate his people, and in so doing, Peter was often the target of the security apparatus. He was jailed, detained, banned for his unnerving determination to tell the story against the odds, against the grain. I remember on one occasion I was in the Jews of photographing a funeral. There was this roaming police car, an armed policeman known as the Death Squad. And as I pointed my camera to take a photograph, they shot back with rubber bullets, narrowly missing, missing me. I turned around and then I saw Peter Mangabani behind me. <coughs> no disrespect for Pete, but after that I did my best to stay as far away from him. <laughs> <laughs> there are two photographs at the introduction of the wall of this exhibition that encapsulate and foreground David and Peter. The one is of David at the first public rally after Nelson Mandela was released. In February 1990, near the state stadium, David pitched up with his 4x5 rig camera, and yeah, with his 4x5 rig. And there's only one photographer in the world who would attend an event like that with a 4x5, <laughs> and that was David Goblet. <laughs> David, the discerning documentarian, used his sharp eye to explore the underbelly of South African society away from the cut and thrust of events intersecting with reality of society where he was driven, as he said, to experience the stink, the feel, and the piss of reality. But there in Soweto, at that moment, he cut a humorous figure. In a preview to the exhibition yesterday, when Pete was here, he said of David, he was a boyki. <laughs> He said, David and I always looked beyond the content. For David, at the core of his work was a recurring interrogation about values. My prime concern was with values. What, what did we value in South Africa? How did we get to those values? And in particular, how did we express those values? And once you start on that line of thinking, then there, it's a continuation and there's no break. <coughs> For Peter, photography was in a sense autobiographical. Through his pictures, through my pictures, I was dealing with the issues that were affecting me. 
I could show the world how apartheid functioned and how oppressed people lived.